nothing beats the convenience of high-speed rail travel between major city centers. And here in Italy, they do it really well with several high-speed rail service providers vying for your business. So let's join Live Ryan at the busiest railway station in Italy. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Buongiorno, and that's right guys, I'm coming to you from right here in Rome and behind me is Stazione Termini which is the main railway station serving the city of Rome and today I'm getting on board a train service from Rome to Venice so come along with me and I'll show you what the experience is going to be like let's do this Stazione di Roma Termini is the busiest train station in Italy handling around 150 million passenger movements annually with 850 trains in transit on any given day. With a spread of 32 platforms, it is Europe's fifth busiest and they hold this title together with Paris Gare du Nord and München Haut Bahnhof. Although the rail lines which run through this land have been around since 1863, this present structure was inaugurated in 1950 the modernist design language has truly stood the test of time because there is little to no structural changes today besides having a major interior refurbishment exercise done in 2016. There is nothing like pulling into a station like Stazione Termini because it gives you an acute sense of arrival. Truly what a global city like Rome encompasses. But today, I'm departing this beautiful station for an onward journey further north into Europe towards Venice. In case you're curious, you can also get on trains to cross international borders towards Vienna in Austria and Munich in Germany. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan. Born and bred in Singapore, I now call Australia home and I create heaps of travel and foodie content. This trip to Rome is a small part of a wider travel series which sees us set foot in seven countries over two and a half weeks. Our first stop was Singapore, where we went to France and then ended up in Malta, where we'd spend most of our time in. From there, we travel through Italy, Switzerland, UK and finally Vietnam before returning home to Australia. So this travel series will include heaps of flight reviews, train journeys, and destination vlogs to last a few months, and they will be linked in the description below as and when they're published. If you don't wish to miss any episodes, make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell icon so you'll get notified whenever they go to air. Giving me a like will encourage me to keep content flowing. So here's a thanks because your support is very much appreciated. We were traveling on New Year's Day, so everyone and anyone seemed to be on the move. Our train ticket QR code did not scan to allow us access via the electronic gates. We showed the security guards the printed ticket and they barely glanced at anything and just waved us through. Meanwhile, a sign in broken English next to them proudly announced that we not information. Okay, whatever. This morning, we were traveling with Train Italia, itself a subsidiary of Ferrovie dello Stato Italiane, a company partly owned by the Italian government. Train Italia is the primary provider of train services within Italy. And some of these are high-speed trains like the one we're getting on, the Freccia Rosa. Our chariot assigned to us this morning was the Elettrotreno Rapido 500, which is capable of reaching speeds of up to 360 km per hour. For this morning's departure from Rome to Venice, we're travelling in premium class. It's configured in a 2x2 two two, and you'd have seats facing in both directions of travel. We chose the seats which face each other for more space 
but you'd get the awkward situation of accidental footsies with your opposite seat neighbour. These seats feel a lot more spacious than the regular ones because of the foldable desk between rows, which can be opened to create a larger working space. There are power ports beneath them, which is handy. These look like adjustable headrests, but they're stuck in place and don't move at all. What a teaser! We're immediately next to the cafe car, which serves up your usual snacks and warm sandwiches. It's nothing fancy, but it'll do for this train journey. Our scheduled departure time for this train service was supposed to be at 9.35am. Looks like we're running 2 minutes behind. If this happened in Japan, you'd have half the station staff out on the platform bowing in unison to apologise for the delay. Speaking of which, I have a trip planned to Japan later this year in November. Shall I get on the Shinkansen? Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to produce a video on that. As we pull out of Rome, we make the first stop at Rome's other major railway station. Roma Tiburtina is a hub station for high-speed rail services not terminating in Rome. These trains can pull into Tiburtina in one direction and depart the same way as opposed to Stazione Termini where we departed from, where the tracks are a dead end. From here on, our next stop is Florence or Firenze. This rail line we're on is called Direttissima, which means direct in Italian. We cover a distance of 240 kilometers between Roma and Firenze, and this line was the first of the many high-speed rail lines to be constructed in Italy. It was operational from 1977 and it is Europe's very first high-speed rail line. This track to Firenze would be the longest non-stop journey on this trip, so the trolleys also used this time to make an appearance. We were provided with a bottle of water with two packets of snacks. I wasn't expecting to receive anything in the first place, so this was a nice surprise. Although this train is capable of reaching speeds of up to 360 km per hour, the limit is operationally capped at 300 in Italy. The maximum speed we achieved today was around the 250 mark. The speed would then drop further as the journey progressed to the point it wasn't exactly high speed anymore. By the way, there is actually a recline function for the seat, if you can call it that. By pulling this knob here, the bottom seat cushion slides forward and you slouch in your seat. So the recline is kind of fake, but it means you're not reclining into another person's space behind you. It's not ideal, and I cannot see myself doing a long distance overnight in this. But for the majority of Frecciarosa's network, I suppose this will suffice for now. This is a fantastic opportunity for me to point out just how friendly the crew members were on board. The two ladies manning the cafe were absolutely hilarious. They spoke little English, and I spoke little to no Italian. But that did not stop them from asking me to decide who to make my cappuccino. The one on the left said she was bene. The one on the right insisted this one no bene, me is the bene. You Australia? Ay ay ay, bello bello! Eventually, I got my cappuccino after much comical theatrics from the pair, but this was the tone for the service style for much of my experiences in Italy. No one took themselves too seriously, and the language barrier was really not a hindrance. Loud expressive Italian expressions was somehow understood, because if you speak French like I do, you can kinda sorta make out what the message is. We're now pulling into Firenze, the capital city of Toscana in central Italy. It's more commonly known to the outside world as Florence, and the population sits today at just under 370,000 people. Firenze is one of the more popular tourist destinations due to its medieval history, and it's considered by historical academics as the birthplace of the Renaissance. 
a term which I have used several times since I've started this European travel series in Malta. We pulled into Firenze Statuto at about 11.36. So it is now 11.45. And we've been at the same spot the whole time. Um, they did say that the train is going to be slowing down significantly along the way. And we have about a 30 minute delay on our arrival time into Venice. Yeah, so it's not a good day for everyone traveling because of the delay. They did say exactly why the train is slowing down though. Yeah, they just said it's, it's going to be going slower than usual. We eventually pulled into the main station handling high-speed rail services. This is Stazione di Firenze Santa Maria Novella. Handling some 59 million passenger movements annually, it is considered to be one of Italy's busiest. Although this station handles non-terminating train services arriving and continuing to their next destination, the tracks here essentially come to an end. Therefore, our train stopped at Statuto for a long time, allowing for traffic to clear, before we pulled in, and then departed in the opposite direction away from the station. As the journey continues, let's look at the regular seats in this cabin. It comes with a footrest and this seriously amazing pitch. There's also an extremely gigantic tray table for your perusal. So it isn't too bad of a place to be, but I still prefer the seat which I'm in though. Our next stop from Firenze would be Bologna. This segment of the high-speed rail track was opened in December 2009 allowing a 37-minute journey between these two city centres. It was particularly challenging to build because this track runs through a small section of the Apennine mountain range, which runs the entire spine of Italy. Therefore, 93% of this 78.5 km journey runs through a total of 9 tunnels, separated by very short stretches of ground-level surface, which totals less than 5 km. Before we can breathe and say La Patito Vien Mangiando, we're now arriving into the city of Bologna. Contrary to popular belief, spaghetti bolognese did not originate here. Instead, historians generally agree that this dish came from Imola, a city not too far from here, and the earliest documented evidence of this popular source dates back to the late 18th century. The main railway station serving this city is Bologna Centrale. This station averages about 58 million passengers a year, and it is Italy's fifth busiest. However, the number of train movements per day are high at about 800, putting it somewhere up there with Roma Termini. In 1980, a bomb was detonated inside the lobby of this station which killed 85 people and injured hundreds more. Even though much of the damage was dealt with and reconstructed, a section of the original flooring and a huge crack on the wall has been maintained as a memorial to the victims of this attack. After departure from Bologna, lunch consisted of this ham and cheese wrap which tasted as good as it looked, which is not very good. I found the ham to be very hammy, if that's even a word and it tasted incredibly waxy as well. It's like chewing on someone's yeasty, starchy, three-day-old gym socks. And thankfully, this was the only black spot on my otherwise fantastic culinary journey through Italy. From here on to the final portion of our journey, the average speed hovered around the 170 mark right up till outside Venice before we cross the causeway over water towards our destination. And it's right about here I sum up my thoughts about riding the high-speed rail in Italy for the first time. 
I've always appreciated the convenience of high-speed rail travel between city centres. I live in a country where rail services are an embarrassment for a developed country. So getting to experience these sort of rail journeys, like the one today, are memories to be treasured. Italian rail travel presents some of the top ways to see the country, and these trains are clean, very quiet, and run frequently so there's no fear of missing out. Besides these daytime services, there are also overnight sleeper trains which I'm very curious to try. This service on Train Italia had all the makings of what high-speed rail travel entails. Expeditious commute made easy, friendly staff, and the seats that were relatively comfy. But these seats weren't designed for long-haul travel though, and I think they're sufficient for the type of duration within this network. Perhaps the only drawback for today's trip was the delay. It started as we approached Firenze and we were holding still at one spot. I suspect the station had no space for us, but we'll never know because there were no announcements about why we were slowing down or stopping. The only announcements were pre-recorded in Italian and English that we're now 30 minutes late, 60 minutes late, so on and so forth. And there were sections of the journey where we were crawling along the track so slowly cars were overtaking us on the highway. On the whole, we weren't in a rush so the slowdown didn't really bother us at all. But if you had a schedule to keep, I suppose this could have been very frustrating. The fare for a premium class seat between Rome and Venice fluctuates between 70 Australian dollars to 120. And this is dependent on the time of departure. A direct train takes 4 hours. But we're now pulling into Stazione di Venezia Santa Lucia at 3.15pm. And that's a delay of over an hour and a half. Would you like to ride a train in Italy after watching this video? Or have you done it before? What was your experience like? Let me know in the comments either way. Meanwhile, let's join Live Ryan out on the platform to conclude this video. Rosa with uh, Train Italia from Rome to Venice. Yeah, I mean, we were delayed. Um, we arrived one hour, 35 minutes late. But, I mean, hey, it is what it is because they had, um, the, the train slowed down for a lot um, on the tracks, but they never really explained why were they slowing down. Uh, but they did tell us that uh, because we're slowing down, we're going to be arriving um, 30 minutes late, 60 minutes late, an hour 30 minutes late so they were pretty proactive in telling us um, the delay time but no reason was provided why um, yeah so we can only speculate anyway uh, because of EU laws we are eligible for compensation so for a delay of an hour 30 minutes we get 50% off um, of our ticket fares we have a year to claim it so that will be interesting to see how that process goes anyway um, yeah so I'm in Venice now and uh, I'm gonna begin the Venice um, visit video for the next episode so until then I've chucked details of my Instagram on your screen right now so hit me up there and chuck me a follow so you can actually see where am I traveling to in real time and it also gives you an idea of the type of videos that will be coming up on my YouTube channel. Okay, so in the meantime, take care all of you. And I will see you for my next video. Bye.